Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, phone hacking, intrusion, bullying and smears. More than five years after this kind of shocking behaviour by some of Britain's most popular newspapers was exposed, the Leveson inquiry has already led to new, tougher regulations. But the fierce debate over press freedom versus responsibility rages on. And on Tuesday, the government will end its consultation over what more needs to be done. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Davis, reports. Remember this? She's, she's picked up her voicemails, Bob. She's alive. And I was just... It, it was then, really. I felt such a sense of um, invasion. If you take away the cameras, what have you got? You've got a pack of men chasing a woman, and obviously that's a very intimidating situation to be in. Leveson Inquiry Part 1, where witness after witness, more than 300 were called, and where a judge eventually gave his damning verdict on past injustices, as he put it, perpetrated by the press. Private lives treated as commodities, truth and dignity sacrificed in pursuit of stories. It's been four years since it ended. Numerous criminal trials followed, but there are matters still outstanding, which the government put recently to a public consultation. Such as Leveson Part 2, the section of the inquiry meant to examine relationships between the press and the police. After all this time, after all the criminal trials, is it still worth going ahead with this, is the question. And then there's something called Section 40 of the Crime and Courts Act. To introduce it or not, many in the newspaper industry are vehemently opposed to it. Section 40 was designed as a way to encourage the press to sign up to a new post-Leveson regulatory body recognised under Royal Charter. Because if a newspaper chooses not to join that approved body, if Section 40 was brought in, then in libel cases, for instance, the paper would have to pay all legal costs, even those incurred by a complainant who loses against them. For some uh, courses it starts up uh, next week. Others Punitive, yes but justified, according to this media academic who explains the thinking behind it. The idea was that they didn't want to deter people who don't have the money to maybe take on a large newspaper with all the costs involved. They might be worried that, you know, I can't possibly take on the Daily Mail or whoever it is because I don't have the money to pay the legal bills. But if they know they won't have to pay those costs, they're more likely to take that complaint forward. That was why it was created like that. But in the industry, it's seen very differently indeed. The Daily Mail has called it an appalling piece of legislation. The Telegraph has declared the most profound impact would be on the health of our democracy itself, while the Metro claims Section 40 would leave nobody to expose scandals ranging from the Rotherham sex grooming cover-up to MPs' expenses. Media Wales, owned by the Trinity Mirror Group, publishes several titles in Wales. Like most of the industry, they refused to sign up to the Royal Charter recognised regulator, preferring instead the press-funded rival body called Ipso. Why, I ask their editor-in-chief, do they consider Section 40 such a threat? The most terrifying thing is the chilling effect, because in real terms what would happen would be we would not be able to publish the type of well, in a headline sense, the type of public interest journalism that I'm sure everybody agrees that we should do, you know, exposing corruption. Why not? Um, because those people who uh, we were targeting legitimately and in the public interest would be able to threaten us with a libel action that would cost us so much money to fight successfully that we just wouldn't be able to publish. Well, the solution to that is that you sign up to the recognised regulator and then you won't have to pay these prohibitive costs. No, but uh, we don't see why we should be forced to do that. And many in his industry share that view. Press regulation, Leveson part two, as the government's consultation nears a conclusion next week. Voices on either side of this enduring debate grow louder. Well, earlier I spoke to the journalist Peter Jukes, who supports the campaign for greater press regulation, and Rachel Jolly from Index on Censorship, who promote free expression worldwide and monitor threats to free speech. And I began by asking Peter Jukes why he thought it was fair that publications would have to pay the legal costs of someone who is guilty 
of what they've been accused of. I'd be completely unfair if that was even half the story. That's a third of the story. Basically, if you avoid low-cost arbitration, which is the Leveson system, and you go to court, you have to pay for the luxury of it. So all of this is doing encouraging low-cost arbitration, access to justice for uh, victims of press abuses. If you sign up to, to the state body. No, it's not, there's no state body. If you sign up to an independent regulator, the regulation is to protect against state interference and commercial interference. Um, Rachel, how independent do you see this alternative regulator that Peter Dukes is part of? Index has a long history of opposing state involvement, government involvement in the media and media freedom. And um, what we see here is the politicians being too close and controlling press freedom in, um, in this form. And we're not, we're not happy to join IPSO and, we don't, and we're certainly not happy to join IMPRESS. Why, well, why not? Which is state approved. I mean, we feel that, you know, it, it's basically giving politicians too much control over, over the media. The press sounds like it's being terribly principled and independent and trying to push away political interference when th the truth is it's, it's also trying to stop victims of their excesses having low-cost fair access to justice i think at the heart of this is actually that this is a very just a bizarre rule isn't it if it was happening anywhere else in the world british politicians would be outraged the idea that you can publish a story your local newspaper that say the maidenhead advertiser could publish a story about say a care home and how it's abusing people within it and that care home company could take the local newspaper to court yes, but, but and that, make that's them pay you, the cost that's because you're choosing <laughs> not to go along with what was set up after this long, drawn-out, very expensive inquiry, choose... which everybody gave evidence and ended up with a system. If you choose to not join this state-approved regulator, which thousands, basically thousands of newspapers and magazines and publishers have chosen not to do, I mean, this it's, it's a bizarre-sounding set of regulations. And, you know, if it, if it was going on in any other place in the world, we would look at it in, with outrage. It's going on in Ireland, and their press freedom index has gone up. It goes on in Finland. Their press, it's just low-cost arbitration. You, you seem to have forgotten all those victims who we heard during the Leveson process. No, not at all. And, and um, we're in favour of a low-cost arbitration scheme, not one that... And we think it should one that should be open to every newspaper publication, where whether it's Private Eye, whether it's The Guardian, whether it's the FT, whether it's the Daily Mirror, that it shouldn't be um, regulated by joining this organisation, which is which is state approved. If if there so, is you a, just you just have we, what you have at the if, moment, but you take away the, the, the statutory elements. And this is elements. not what Leveson had in mind. He did not have in mind this. Uh, he he had in mind a, a regulator that the majority of the press would join. This is not that. But Leveson recognised you need an incentive. No newspaper is going to give up that power to monster, to mark its own harm, homework, unless there's a carrot and a stick. And I'd happy hear another stick. You know, if Rachel could tell me another way to make Murdoch and Dacre uh, and, and Desmond listen to it, actually correct properly, I'd go along with it. I think the point here is that we are against state control. We are against politicians getting too close to the media. And in, in effect, what you're doing is handing politicians the opportunity to control the press. Wow. It is triple locked against any political interference. The recognition panel is appointed more separately than the judiciary is, and it would take two-thirds majority in the House of Lords, House of Commons and the Scottish Assembly to overturn its remit as make sure that a regulator is free from commercial and political power. Now, of course, there's always a danger of state control. You have it with the IP bill, but that's every day, and that's just on a simple majority they can overturn our press freedom. This is one in the, the, the Royal Charter. is one of the more protected forms. In fact, the press came up with the idea of the World Charter, because it had very little political interference. Journalists around the country are against joining this organisation. No, they need to local, for it. Local newspaper editors from the Maidenhead Advertiser to the Nottingham Post Why? really fear that this kind of financial pressure could push them over the edge. They're all local newspapers are already under enormous financial pressure. They're all doing... Many of them are doing an absolutely excellent job bringing um, stories out that, that nobody else is covering. Do you really want those newspapers no, to close? At the same time... Of course time, not. This this well, legislation it, does nothing no, this, to look at what's happening on the web, which is, you know, a massive part of what, what's happening in, in the world of journalism right now. So it's quite a big point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 you know, the world has overtaken this regulatory system. Of course. And mm. what, what is the point of having these big 
structures that don't affect the vast majority of what people are now reading. Look, here's the thing. You know, coal mining's declining, just like the paper's declining. We don't suddenly say, well, there's no regulation needed in coal mining, uh, children can go down the mines. This idea of fair... You know, fake news is a huge problem. This idea of accuracy, this idea of arbitration and avoiding the courts is very relevant to the online world. It sets a precedent. Peter Jukes and Rachel Jolly talking to me earlier. I've been